Today we will work on my Soutage beginner project, which, uh, which is these lovely summer style earrings. They are super easy, quick, kind of quick to make. And I will try to explain all the soutage basics, how to do the loops, how to attach soutage to the beading foundation, how to attach the bead backing. And if you need any of those supplies, you can go below the video into the description box where you find all the links, gather the supplies and we will start working. So for these earrings, we will be working with 25 millimeter uh, glass cabochons. With soutage it's great because you uh, can use basically anything and although I am here using 25mm cabochons you can later use smaller, bigger, whatever you need if you want to make a pendant, a brooch, it's totally up to you. So with the like you can apply the same shape to different to different sizes of cabochons and you can definitely reach very similar and at the same time different results. So this is the first earring and now we will try to make the second one. For the glass cabochons which have uh, this paper with picture glued on the back, I recommend using Permalac because uh, <clears throat> Excuse me. It will protect the paper because some glues, depending on the quality and even on the on the content of the chemicals, might later bite into the paper and destroy your jewelry. So I would recommend before starting working on these to apply a layer of Permalac. Just brush it quickly and it will also dry off quickly just to be sure that you gave it enough protection because probably you will spend a few hours working on these or whatever you are making and you want to uh, keep your cabochon protected and you want to keep, uh, keep it nice so I will have to wait for a bit and in the meantime we will just uh, measure. So you will need beading foundation. I have here this um, this pink one. You can get multiple or various um, uh, foundations and we carry the black one or the white one. You can also um, color the white one. It's totally up to you. In the end it shouldn't be visible so it doesn't matter which color it has. And you will need just a small piece, which is only like uh, only probably three millimeter wider than or larger around the cabochon. So we will be attaching later the soutage onto the foundation. So we will now glue the cabochon onto the foundation. You can use E6000 or any probably any other almost. Um, uh, jewelry glue. I am using German glue Reiher. It's called Reiher. We will stock it hopefully sometime soon, at least in our uh, European um, shop. You don't need to, you don't have to apply large amounts of the glue, just you need to be sure that there's enough glue even on the edges. So what you want to do is to glue it down completely because you will be going with your thread and needle underneath the cabochon and the needle might sometimes like lift up the cabochon and then it might pop out of your bezel which you don't want to. So you can use toothpick which will help you and then you need to place it on the foundation and wait for it to dry. So after the glue dried, you can cut out the cabochon. So I will leave three millimeters around the cabochon. We will be attaching the soutage right onto the beading foundation, which means that you need to keep a small piece around the whole cabochon. We will be attaching only the first soutage, which is closest to 
the cabochon, which will be black one for us today. So it doesn't, the beading foundation doesn't have to go out that much. I will probably cut out a bit more because if the foundation is larger than the soutage, it's uh, difficult to cut out, cut it out later. So I will probably shorten the outsides a bit to shorten it to like two, maximum three millimeters around the whole thing. And then we will start attaching the soutage. I have here ready my four braids I want to work with. This is Czech soutage, three millimeters wide, and it is made from 100% viscose, so it's a semi-natural fabric braid. And now we will start working with the black one. You can already watch my product spotlight on soutage and the items you need to when you are making some soutage jewelry. So you can definitely watch some more details about it if you are interested. So today we jump right into it. I have already prepared my thread with a piece of thread. Soutage is amazing because you can start and end your thread basically whenever you want, whenever you need. You just hide it in the back and then you will cover it with the backing and all is well, all is fine, all is hidden. So cut yourself a piece of thread, which are you comfortable to work with. Make three knots in the end. And then we will start from actually the place where these two sides merge. So I will start here from the top. It's up to you if you want to make like the earrings asymmetrical. I don't want to do that today. I will try to make them as symmetrical as I can. So I will probably start somewhere around here. So I'm going from the back to the front as close to the cabochon with my thread as I can. And now I will take the black soutage and put these four, uh, these three braids away. So I'm working with yellow thread. It's not because it's amazing that you will see it on the black one, but it's not because of that. It's because here in the end, the yellow thread will be on the outside. And if you worked uh, well enough, it won't be visible on the black one because it will be hidden here. It is a bit shown here, but you can definitely later switch even to the black one if you don't like it or if you want to, you might use a sharpie or something like that and be very careful and cover like, like color the yellow thread into onto black. But I prefer to have nice stitches. They are, I prefer to regular, regular ones, small ones. So I, I don't think it looks that bad besides it's uh, on your ear and it b basically it's almost not visible. So that is why I work with the yellow basically to match the outside soutage. And how to measure it? Um, I already described in the product spotlight how to, how to decide which part is the back and the top of the soutage. So I already laid down the braids the way I want to work with them. And I measure it out in the way that I bend it in half I insert the cabochon and then I squeeze at the point where I want to start and this will be my entails that later will turn into the loops plus I have some spare part and that way I cut the braid and then I also know I want to start here so I will take it into my fingers and I will start sewing so when you uh, are doing soutache embroidery, you are always sewing through this little center line, which is the line in the middle. So when you lie the braid flat, you can see here the line. So this that is where you go with your needle through. You want to go only there because if you go up or down, you might damage the fibers which cover the soutache thicker lines which are inside, which are hidden inside and then damage your final product. So try as much as possible to go only through the center line. 
Then uh, slide down the soutage right to the cabochon. Then use your fingers to position the soutage so it leans on the cap. And then go like three millimeters through the soutage and then also right next to the cabochon down to the backing. So you can see I went from like the outside to the inside and also to the back. And then you will pull. And this is your first stitch. You can use your, I'm using your nails to position the soutage and then I'm turning the cabochon and I'm working from behind. And there, somewhere underneath the thread, I am going back to the top and to the front through the beading foundation. And I'm trying to come out with my needle at the same place where I finished the previous stitch. So one stitch follows the other. That's the rule. And I pull a bit. The pull of the thread is very important. It can't be too much so that you don't have bends and dents and stuff like that in your soutage. But it can be super loose, otherwise uh, the soutage will, well, probably it won't, but it might fall apart. You might see gaps in it in the future and generally it's not a good thing. So probably the tightness of your thread will be a big issue, so I really recommend practice and a lot of patience. So don't give up and continue working. And like I did the previous stitch, I'm doing the same. So I positioned the braid, I made a small stitch going from the outside to the inside and to the back and down. Watch out for knots on your thread and up. I'm again going out on the same place from the previous stitch. Again, positioning just a, just a piece of the soutage for the next stitch. I'm making another stitch, a small one. and I'm pulling. So like this, I will go around the whole cabochon attaching this first soutage braid. Try to be neat and patient. I am using quite small stitches uh, for this first braid because for the, as we continue, we will attach the three remaining braids to this braid so the first, the base, the foundation needs to be quite well stitched because if you make mistakes here, it will be visible in the upper levers as well. So try to work as neatly as possible, trying to pull some way, halfway, not too tight and not too loose and go around the whole cabochon. And then I will meet you again and we will continue on the next step. So I attached the braid around the whole cabochon and now what I need to do is to first uh, merge them together and connect them with a few stitches. You want to connect them as close to the cabochon as possible, but you don't want to go that high or too, too high because then you will have to split the two halves, the, the like eight soutache into four and four, and you need to do it quite close to the cabochon. So with just a few stitches, going back and forth like there and back and 
quite close to cabochon. And I usually do the stitches and then I pull. And I pull in the way that I have my index finger underneath the braids. I have my thumb covering the braids and I am like securing the position of the braids with the fingers. I'm not squeezing that much. I'm just like holding it in place and then I'm slightly pulling on the thread, which means that I won't be creating a huge dent here and it will stay in its place. And now we will be adding more braids, the remaining three colorful ones. We are starting here from the from the place where the soutage is bending and there we will add more. We will start with the pink one and you need to only decide which way is the top and which way is the bottom. So see the product spotlight to decide which way the braid should go. And then since you already measured the black soutage, you are good to go. Just measure the same tail and go through the center line of the pink one. Then also do the same with the orange. Again, going with the center line. And the yellow, which will be on the outside for me. And then slide them down towards the bend towards the start. And now it's important how to hold the soutage. So I heard from people that they get cramps when they make soutage because they are holding it too tight so it doesn't slide, it doesn't move. That's wrong. All you need to do is hold your thread under some tension so it's, it's not like flying anywhere and then you want to use your, again, your index finger, which is leaning, then the soutage is leaning on the index finger. And then you use your thumb to hold the three soutage together. I'm not squeezing it. I'm not doing anything because if I would squeeze hard that I would do this and I could damage the braids because they would not be flat anymore and that's just not good. <laughs> so what you want to do is to hold the soutage braids and like prepare them only for the next stitch. You don't need to hold it in the shape for the whole cabochon, just for the next stitch. So let me again do it. So I'm sliding it down. I'm holding the thread like this. The back is leaning on my index finger and the front I'm holding with my thumb. And then I'm going through the center lines with my needle and also through the black soutage. So now my needle is actually touching the cabochon and then I'm switching and doing the th same thing like we did when we attached the black one and I'm going through the backing. You don't have to if the backing is sometimes very short but it's easier there's no rule if you have to do it or don't just do what makes you comfortable and what makes the work easier for you basically and again I am on the other side and I'm just this time because I'm working the other way the front is leaning on my index finger and now I don't need the thumb but I'm using the thread to keep the tension. And again, I'm going through the bead backing and up. And if you have good, probably size 12 needle, it's better than size 10 for me at least. And I would recommend using this because it's so much easier to get through these in the correct position. Then you will probably pick all the braids at the same time. 
and I'm again going up through the center lines and coming out of the yellow soutache at the same place my previous stitch ended. And I am again holding it in my fingers and pulling a bit. Then I will turn it to face me. Again, I'm preparing the braids for only the next stitch. And I can make a bit longer ones than when I was stitching the black one. I can like even pick one after the other, that's completely fine. I can even sometimes lose it completely. And I will repeat and go to the back. Turning the work, going through the foundation and again the beads, oh sorry, the braids and coming out of the of the stitch. Now I am using the same color of the thread as is my soutache braid which is on the outside. Now I will continue like this, always preparing the piece of the braid, I will sew down, going through the black soutache, the backing. I, and then up. Sometimes I need to fish through the braids a bit to come out in the same place. So continue like this until you reach the other side. Then we will stitch together all the braids and we will add beads. So I finished attaching the braids around the cabochon. And now, as I said previously, we will need to connect all eight braids together. So you should end somewhere here in the second uh, place where the braids bend on the other side. Sometimes there's a little gap here between the first one, the black one, and the second one, which is the pink one. So especially on the finishing side, like on this one, you might want to go a bit up on the like on the bend and go right into the middle but don't go in front in like to the front like I did for you just go to the back and that should pull the three braids closer to the black one here it's not super visible I will show you on the other side as well. So here I am in the back. So I want to come out somewhere, somewhere around here. And then I will do the same. So I'm coming uh, down through the soutage braids to the center again, but to the back. And again I'm pulling and that should bring the three braids closer. And now the gap disappeared as you can see. Sometimes it can happen that here where the black soutache merges you can create a gap. So you can use just a 11 0 bead and you can sew down a bead there. I will quickly show you which will, you can do it like this or classic way like this and it will hide the gap because sometimes you can see the you can see the threads there so it can definitely show you, you can put bicone there, fire polished, anything you find and you like in there and like this now we need to connect all eight braids together I will have again, I will have to go outside and now I carefully go from one side to the other. It doesn't matter from which side to which side, start on one side and just go to the other one. Again I'm like holding in, in my fingers between the index and the thumb. I will go a bit up like one millimeter and go back. Uh, 
pull again you can also use your fingers and try to move the soutage a bit so it stays in one level so there's like when you go through the center line it shouldn't happen but sometimes it does just a bit so adjust it and go maybe one more time yeah just be sure like I did right now I didn't go through the center line but if I cover it with my fingers I can prevent all the damage that can happen and now when you merge them you can if you split them like this and there's no almost no thread showing that's what you want to do like if it's too loose and there are threads showing right here you need to pull more and now what we want to do is to make a loop and insert the bead in it so to add the bead you need to create a loop and the loop needs to be like pre-made like half of it then we will insert the bead and then we will finish the loop so here the loop is quite small so you don't need to do many stitches to do the first half so I'm going from the center from the yellow uh, part from the yellow side to the black outside you can also if you don't like the yellow on the black you can switch to the to black thread but I'm okay with this and I'm again holding it with my fingers and since the loop is small only with one stitch I am also having ready the, um, the loop for the bead I'm putting on one eleven o, and I will go into the like in the direction of the of the connection here, and I will go through all four all four braids. You can even go through the beading foundation. That's completely fine, like this. The bead is sitting there and then I will go up also through the braids maybe even the foundation if it's in the way that's completely fine so through the braids through the bead and also through the upper four braids you can split the way that's completely okay and I will again leave the soutage braid in the same spot where the stitch start uh, finished so like this and then the bead is already there the the loop is somehow ready and it holds its shape because of the stitching now all you need to do is finish the loop and attach it to the to the soutage so it won't be opening up so what I do I, I prepare it in my fingers so I shape it around the bead so it will look like this and then I will just make a few more stitches probably two or three so these stitches on the outside are longer ones than the ones on the inside because here the circumference is much longer so here in the middle when I'm going outside again this stitch is super small another stitch going outside and one more stitch I could almost possibly end here but I prefer to make another one which will actually be like hidden in the back and then now actually the loop somewhat holds the shape right but it does this which we don't want to so I will shape it in my fingers again I will check it in the front if all is well if the if the inner side yellow sudash it's not hiding too much uh, behind the bead and now what I want to do is take my needle and right next to the black sudash I will go 
and pick the second and third soutage, like the orange and the pink one. So you don't don't need to go super into the middle to the center line, but you usually will because the needle won't let you go through the like side only. So I'm like picking it up and then going back through the loop. And this will prevent the loop from opening up. I will repeat this. So I am again coming out on the black side, picking up the second and the third soutage. and going back. So now the loop is totally secure and what you need to do is to repeat it on the other side. So you can either knot it off here but what I will what I will do is I'm going here next to the center of the loop. I'm going through the all braids to the other side. This might get tricky, so don't worry if you can't do it. Just some, somehow, invisibly, pref preferably, get to the other side. And now I'm coming out in the middle of the second loop and I will repeat what I just did. So on the other side, I will do the same. So my thread is coming out again out of the middle. So I will go and come out on the other side. Since the loop is again small, I will do only one longer stitch to reach first half of the loop and the place where I put the 11-0. Then I will go through all four braids to the middle like to the center will pull a bit and coming out back through the soutage braids you can again split the way then the bead and also the soutage braids I also again made the loop in my fingers and now I need to finish it. So I'm stitching for the uh, through the prepared loop. Longer stitches on the outside, shorter stitches on the inside. And I'm continuing and then again I will pick up the second and the third soutage after I check that all is fine and attach the already almost finished loop to the side of the soutage. Once and for the second time. like that. So now you can check if you need to do some adjustments. Now it's the time, but I think it's fine. So this is the loop and how to make the loop. Basically it's very, it's the same every single time. Doesn't matter if you put a big bead or smaller bead in it. It just um, differs in the number of stitches you make to create the loop. Now you, what you want to do is to add here a little bridge from beads that we will actually use to connect some component of your choosing. You don't have to use earrings, you can make pendant and then it's fine to attach some jump ring. I would recommend knotting off the earring so that when you want to attach some metal part to it you will be sure in the end that 
sometimes it might come off. You will pull your earring, you never know. There's, a, you know, in winter big scarf, so you might want to knot your thread here. Just to be sure that it didn't do anything with the rest of the soutage because sometimes or very often you can reattach the component. So what I did here, I just went through a bit of soutage making a loop and I'm just going through the loop a few times and then I'm knotting it off and now I can actually cut it while I'm going away from, this, from the knot. So let me quickly make a knot and add the beads. So I will make two or three knots. And here I am going to add the little beaded bridge. I will only use two 11 0 beads, the same ones we used for the loops. I prefer to use 15 o's. You can also use 11 o's, it's up to you. So here close to the split, go out through, go out with your thread. Pick two beads and go to the other side. I'm working with the back side facing me because I'm usually coming out with my needle towards me, like up. So that will that will definitely help you. But also don't forget to check the front because that's the front you will see, right? And like this, you have the bridge. But you need to go through it at least two more times to be sure that in the future, because it's, of course it's the place where the earring is hanging from. So you need to be sure that it will stay and that it's strong. So strengthen it. I'm usually going through it three, four times in total. Like this. Again, I will not have the thread, so for me the comfortable place to do that is somewhere here. So I'm picking up a piece of soutage, making a loop, going through the loop two times, pull and go through the soutage and cut. And this is basically on these earrings, all the work which is done in the front. Now we will cut the braids. You need to use sharp scissors and then you can cut them quite short. Just be sure not to cut any, any threads or stitches. Then use just a, just a bit of glue and dab it. It prevents fraying of the braids. They will be in the end covered by the backing, but still I would recommend doing this. It needs to be just, uh, just a little. Uh, don't forget to let it dry. And in the meantime, you can either work on something else or you can attach this, but it should dry quite quickly. And now we will move over to attaching the back side and then you can attach this piece and then it's completely fine. When the glue is dry and now basically also the front is done, we will move over and cover the back to hide all the threads, all the stitches and also to cover the ends of the braids so that uh, it won't fray even with the glue on. So for earrings you can choose quite colorful 
materials. I'm using the artificial leather, the faux leather, and I am using the golden color, which will go nicely with my chosen findings. And for this, you will need to cut out a piece of the backing, which will be big enough to hide all your, like the whole piece. So I don't use any pen or pencil to thread along the on the piece. I'm just roughly cutting out the shape. I will put away the rest and then we will stitch it in the end but before that so that the piece is not moving too much I am again applying a bit of glue and then I will put the piece of the backing on the on the earring and in the meantime when it's drying I will put this away you can prepare a piece of thread I will be using yellow again because it's quite similar to the gold but uh, you always want to choose some kind of a thread which corresponds nicely with the color of your backing so that the stitches are not very much visible. You want to make nice small stitches that follow again one another and as I learned this stitch is called blanket stitch so we are connecting the artificial leather and the second soutache from the outside so we are stitching to the orange soutache. Now we need to cut out the perfect shape. It's quite tricky sometimes. I would recommend uh, using scissors with the bent edge. And I'm leaning the scissors towards the soutage. I'm careful not to cut anything. I don't want to. And also I would recommend cutting less of the artificial leather because later when you are stitching or when you are just checking if you cut it well you can definitely cut more so cut less in first at first and then cut more if you think there's still something showing from the front because you want to cover all the back but uh, you don't want to be the, like you don't want to see the artificial leather from the front. Something like this. So I will cut this out and then get back to you and we start stitching. So this is the back prepared for the stitching. I have made three knots at the end of my thread. I'm using again some comfortable length. I would prefer to do all the stitching in one go without um, the need to cut and add new thread. So it's comfortable, like the length is comfortable, but like cut more than less. So you can start whenever you, wherever you want. I would recommend though starting in these uh, like places with the dents in in them because underneath you can simply hide the knot of your thread and it's very easy and also uh, the starting and the ending is here sometimes when you make a mistake it might not have to be like super pretty so it's also again easy to hide in this little band and to start I am going through the leather towards me outside like one or two millimeters from the edge I'm hiding the knot inside 
and then I'll be gently pushing with my thumb the leather towards the soutache. Then I will move forward for like two millimeters again and I'm picking the orange soutache. You don't necessarily need to go like to the middle, to the center line. For this, this is fine, but be careful not to still uh, take out any fibers of the soutache. So I'm going through the second one from the outside because you don't want to stitch to the first one because it would be visible on the front. And then I am going two millimeters away from the place where I started, back right through the leather. And then it creates a loop for me through which I will go away, away from me, so towards the front of the earring. And I will pull. And like this I will continue around the whole thing. So again I'm moving forward, pushing the yellow soutache away and grabbing only the second one. Can also grab the third one maybe sometimes, that's fine. And then again also through the leather. I'm pulling, creating a loop and going through the loop and pull. And like this, it's the same around the whole piece. Be careful of knots. So make small stitches because if you make big ones and there's sudden change in the shape of the earring, like here it's fine, but usually the shapes are not super forgiving and super simple like this big round. And if you make a big stitch and the shape changes, there's a big dent and it's not pretty at all. Also be careful when this loop makes this little tangle, make sure to untangle it and open it correctly so it's not turned and you are clearly going through it the right way. Uh, you can also use as backing ultra suede or other kinds of suede, Al Alcantara and uh, even normal leather. What I would recommend though, I would use for necklaces and bracelets and all other <laughs> kinds of jewelry that touches your skin, I would recommend something else that than artificial leather because it will stick, uh, stick to your skin, which is not very pleasant. So I would recommend something more, more like the suede. So for me, for necklaces and bracelets, I'm doing always ultra suede. So be careful to pull the loop completely like I just did. Then you need to be careful with your needle to pull it up a bit. Yes, and then go through it again. So I will finish this. Then we only need to attach the, the earring, which we use pliers and use a jump ring. And after that, the earring is done. For the last few stitches, I will show you how to finish the backing. So I'm about to do last two stitches. As you can see here, sometimes you really need to go to the first braid for the first one from the outside, but try to do it as much invisible as you can. So this, and then I usually finish where I started. I try to keep it consistent as much as possible. So, oops. The last stitch and then because the first one it's difficult to see but the first one is not 100% nice and it's not horizontal like this but a bit skewed like this 
I'm just going underneath, like from the outside and underneath this skewed piece of thread, picking it up and then I will just do this, which will make it into the horizontal position. And now all I need to do is to knot it off somewhere. So this might get a bit tricky and that's why it's good we started here in the little bend. And this is the place where it's easier to hide the, the thread. So all, you, all what you want to do is to pick somewhere a piece of thread, go underneath it. Again, creating a loop and going through it two times this time. Like when you are about to knot somewhere in the back on the soutache. Now just be careful to make a pretty knot like this and then you want to hide it inside so I'm always trying to go through the second soutache so the thread is completely hidden and we are getting away from the knot and securing the whole thing so now you can't see that I'm going through anything from the front and also not from the back And then I'm pulling, which will also hide the finishing knot inside. And now I can simply cut the thread. Yeah. So this is soutache. Uh, with soutache you can reach the same results in different ways. So don't worry if you change the method for yourself a bit, that's completely fine. I'm teaching you my way, how, how I do things how I'm trying to make my jewelry and this is one of them so if suddenly you don't have a place where you can stitch to the second soutache just stitch to the first one that's completely fine sometimes it's even possible then there that there is no place so you can stitch only to the leather continuing in the in the blanket stitch and then you will again pick up the soutache it depends on the design it depends on what you're making so don't worry this doesn't have like 100% rules, it's a bit more organic, it's changing a bit and this is basically it. And last thing to do is to add the jump ring. So use your pliers to open the jump ring. Put on the earring, one piece, the second piece. And be sure to 100% without any gap to close to close the jump ring like this and now the earrings are finished so now to repeat what we used to make these earrings so you will need two cabochons you can choose whatever size you want you can definitely go for smaller ones, for bigger ones, that's definitely up to you. You can even use square, oval, that's completely fine. The technique is the same. I'm using 25 millimeter here with the peacock feather theme. Then we used a uh, Czech soutache, it has three millimeters uh, width. And we used four colors, you can do also only three, you can use one color, that's completely still up to you. We used the yellow, orange, pink and black. Then you will need seed beads for this. We used 11 O's, Mayo Keys, only eight in total, so that's also <laughs> bead stash friendly. Then you will need some earring components, you can go for something fancier or you can choose classical ear wires and uh, don't use anything so big like this. Then you will need two jump rings to attach the ear, uh, ear finding or you might actually don't need them if you use proper ear wires which have the like the hole, the loop of the earring is nicely uh, in the nice position for that so you might don't even have to use the jump rings. 
Then you will need beading thread, uh, probably henna, milky thread, uh, basically anything which has this fabric wipe, uh, no fire line, no wildfire. You can also use the invisible monofilament cord, but I would recommend more these kinds of threads. Then you will need a beading foundation. Uh, usually I use similar colors to the to the items I'm working with. So I was using a pink one, but for this is completely fine to use white or black because you won't see it anyway. And then you will need some backing. So for this we use the golden artificial leather. You can also use ultra suede or alcantara or normal leather. So this is it. I hope I don't have for, uh, I didn't forget anything. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you had fun. If you have any questions, you can ask them in the comments or let us know on some other channel if you have something to ask about. And if you need any of those supplies, head uh, below the video into the description box. There is the links where you can purchase at potomacbeast.com from US or potomacbeast.eu from uh, our European shop if you need something. Thank you very much for watching and see you next time.